I'm delighted to welcome to the podcast my husband, Brandon. He's the founder and editor of DCInquirer.com. He's been retruthed by Trump regularly and frequently has the most interesting news stories up. So make sure to subscribe and check out DCInquirer.com. Brandon, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Brandon and I are not in the same room right now. I'm recording this at a radio station and he's at home. So that's why we're like not in the same place, but normally we would be. So Brandon, I want to start by discussing this Balenciaga scandal with you because this has been a major issue in the news if people don't know. Basically what happened is Balenciaga released these ad campaigns that showed children in almost like a BDSM fashion um, doing poses and, and different things like that. And so they received some backlash from this, although it clearly has not been enough backlash um brandon what is kind of your reaction to this right well it's interesting because there were there were two different pictures that came out um one of them was a a balenciaga photo shoot where you had a little child who looked like she was probably three or four who was holding a teddy bear dressed in bdsm gear so uh you know leather type straps and things like that and in front of them was uh, a bed that they were standing on um, that had all kinds of Balenciaga products on it. The other one was similar, and I believe it was an Adidas uh, sort of crossover ad where it was another child holding a, a similarly garbed teddy bear. Um, these are, it's also interesting to note that these were separate ads. Um, and as soon as this came public, uh, as soon as people on, on Twitter started to, to pick up on the things that were in these ads, Balenciaga initially apologized, and then they pulled the ad altogether. Um, I think it's really telling what happened here, though. Um, Balenciaga did pull the ads, but I think whenever you think about what what was the controversy here, Balenciaga wasn't upset that they did something wrong. I think that they weren't really even upset that they got caught, as some people are, are sort of assuming. I think what what happened is from their standpoint, they're saying they pushed the bar too far too soon. And that's why they're why why they're sorry and why they're regretful. This is a company like most high fashion brands who kind of makes it their their M.O. to push the boundary as far as they possibly can every single year. So it starts with sexualizing children and then you start getting into other sort of abnormal situations that they want to promote. And then now we're at a uh, pretty, pretty explicit sexualization of young children. So the problem isn't that, that they did something bad from their perspective. It wasn't even that they got caught. It's just that they went too far too soon. This is something that, that conservatives have been warning about for a long time as this, this more pervasive uh, libertine sexual culture has seeped into high society and now is being pushed on the rest of us, whether we like it or not. Right. And this is one of the major problems with the left constantly trying to, as you mentioned, push the boundary, shock people because they think that's what gets eyeballs. That's what gets attention. That's what makes a good ad, making it as weird and disturbing as possible. But I think when it comes to these things with the children, it's really not a coincidence because millions of dollars goes into these shoots they plan these things out ahead of time they have you know the the company obviously balenciaga but then all the people they hire they have stylists they have the models so a lot goes into these shoots and like you said there were also multiple different photos uh, from different campaigns that had similarly disturbing imagery we then saw kim kardashian she tweeted about this saying basically that she would reevaluate her relationship with Balenciaga. So what's your reaction there? Right. Well, you've had, what's interesting is not as much the people who are saying things. It's, it's how many people have been silent. Lots of celebrities work with Balenciaga. And I have a, a list right here. Here are some of them who have worked with them recently. Bella Hadid, Nicole Kidman, neither one of them have said anything. And they were both involved in this spring 2023 campaign that had these children. Kylie Jenner, Khloe Kardashian, Alexa Demi, Doja Cat, and Selma Hayek, um, whose husband actually owns Balenciaga, which is owned by Balenciaga, is owned by a company called Keering. Um, 
And then you have Kim Kardashian, who's made kind of a, a brief statement saying that she was disturbed by the images. But what's really telling is that none of these people are actually cutting ties with Balenciaga. Most of them aren't saying a thing about it. Why is that? It's because they're getting paid so much. Um, just imagine if this happened, if Balenciaga made an offensive comment about another protected community, um, whether that be a racial community or uh, the LGBTQ community, all of these people would immediately disavow Balenciaga and they would never work with, it, with them again. We see that time and again. Um, but now that it's about exploiting children, it's dead silent. It says so much about what is uh, considered culturally acceptable and what isn't to this elite class of celebrities and Hollywood people and high high fashion and high society. Yeah, yeah, it tells you a lot about Kim Kardashian, who was willing to cut ties with her husband, the father of her children, Kanye West, known as Ye, but not Balenciaga, because she knows that Balenciaga pays her a lot of money. And unfortunately, when you're someone like Kanye West, even if you said something anti-Semitic or whatever it was, that everyone will drop you immediately. You will lose all your brand deals. You will be a complete pariah. But if you're Balenciaga, that basically errs on the side of child exploitation, then you're going to continue to have a successful business. And we 